So I'd like to introduce Jake Yip, who's uh, from the Nectar team, he's going to, talk, going to give his presentation now. Thank you, Jake. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yep, cool. All right, so thanks everyone for coming. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> um, my name is Jake. Um, I work at ARDC as a DevOps engineer together with Kiran, who is also going to be talking a bit later. Um, today, we are going to have a very brief um, um, talk and a bit of a demo on Kubernetes um, that is prov provided in the Nectar Cloud by Magnum. So yeah, what's Kubernetes? Well, I guess uh, a lot of us uh, have heard of Kubernetes as um, something new and shiny and everyone loves it and wants to get into it. Right, but unfortunately, um, using it is fun, but setting up is not really that fun. So, like, there are many, many different ways of setting up um, Kubernetes. Um, some of the ways are like Rancho and Kubespring and Cops. And um, in the technical field, when there is n solutions that does not really work well, we come up with n plus one solution. So the N plus one solution is uh, Magnum. Um, not really, but yeah, um, later further on, we'll see why Magnum is, why we adopted Magnum to provide for Kubernetes in the Nectar cloud. Um, so Magnum, Magnum is a um, container orchestration engine service. It allows us to, allows a user to create a Kubernetes service easily from a dashboard without really needing to learn about Kubernetes. Um, it builds on the OpenStack resources. It's a project started um, in OpenStack land and over the years, um, contributors have come and gone and currently at this point in time is primarily worked on by um, a few research institutions so CERN, um, Catalyst in New Zealand, and Stack HPC in UK are the top three contributors. Um, there are a few other contributors like us who use it and find bugs and fix it. So we do help out upstream. Um, we introduced this in Nectar in 2018. Um, but as you might have heard from Luca previously, it wasn't, it was quite unpolished then. Um, but since then, there are a lot of improvements. Um, primarily with the latest released, um, we've gone, um, it has a new operating system and a new way of handling upgrades and things like that. So how it works, uh, it uses OpenStack native resources that we are all familiar, we might be familiar with, like uh, Nova instances for compute, um, Octavia load balancer for um, the ingress. Um, there is a uh, advanced networking to tie all together. This is something new-ish has been around for about two years now. Um, then volume for storage using backed by Cinder. So it uses the same storage pool as your <coughs> normal volume um, that you use on the Nectar Research Cloud. Um, this is a brief diagram on how it all looks and work together in the Nectar Cloud. So our, at the top of it all, our user will interact with a load balancer. Um, Magnum spins up a bunch of uh, instances that are that can act as a master and uh, workers. Um, these are just Nova instances. They are all connected using the advanced networking tenant network, and they talk to the volume storage provided by Cinder. Um, so just a brief recap again on how it all looks in the Kubernetes land and the OpenStack land. Uh, Kubernetes node 
is a Nova instance. Uh, Kubernetes persistent volume is a center volume. A Kubernetes service type of load balancer is an Octavia load balancer. The whole setup, configuration, provisioning of nodes of a whole Kubernetes cluster is all done using heat. And yeah, so now we go to some of the features of Magnum. Um, one of the things that now can do is that you can scale both up and down. So you start off with a small cluster, maybe one master and one worker. And then when you get, like you need more resources, you can just say, hey, not count equals to three. And Magnum will go and provision another two more instances for you, set them up, uh, set up the networking, and you will see it all appear in Kubernetes land as when you do a kubectl get nodes, you see, oh, now I have three nodes. Um, it can scale down also. Um, scaling down simply is an instruction to Nova to um, delete a node. So one of the things that you have to remember is that um, it's better for you to do a kubectl drain before you scale down. This will allow Kubernetes to um, handle the ports properly, like move them away and things like that and not schedule any more new jobs to the node, then when you destroy the job, uh, node, it will have uh, less of an impact. Um, there's this newish thing in Magnum called node groups. So previously, your whole cluster can only have one flavor for worker. Now you can have uh, node groups which handles different flavor. So for example, you can have four small instances doing some type of work and like two large instances doing other type of work. You can label them with using Kubernetes and launch your port according to the labels. So yeah, like maybe intensive jobs, compute intensive, you want to launch them on the large instances, for example, that's easily done. Um, Magnum now also supports uh, scaling storage. So it can scale up, but um, as you might notice, there is no scale down. Scale down of storage is a hard problem, I think. Um, <clears throat> so scaling up is a two-step process. You can say, hey, I have a two gig volume now. I want a four gig volume. So it's a two-step process. First of all, Magnum was signal OpenStack. I want this cinder volume to be expanded from two gig to four gig, and the raw device would expand. And when that finishes, you will need to expand your file system. So the file system will be expanded. Um, the file system at this point in time is still being used by the port, so uh, it doesn't expand online. But when you restart the port, as the port is coming up, it will expand the file system. So very nice. Um, now you might be interested in wanting a play. Um, so just before you jump into it, uh, you will need a quota for a few resources that Magnum would use. Um, so some of the resources that we are familiar with are like the compute um, quota and the volume quota. This we all know, but um, for Magnum, it uses other native resources like advanced networking, routers, flowing IP, network load balances. Typically, you might not have requested for this. Um, so you will need this before you can even spin up one cluster. So uh, we have done some work on the allocation system. This is a uh, great work by Stephen Crawley. Um, so now we have a place where you can say, I want a container orchestration service. And I want um, two numbers of uh, container clusters and it will check and hint. So if you, you want one cluster, you'll check whether you have one router, two floating IPs, one network load balances and things like that, and hint to you if you <clears throat> um, did not specify 
um, enough resources for your cluster. So of course you, you can always have more, uh, specify for more. All right, um, time for demo, the exciting part. Exciting for me. Okay. Let me stop share of this. So I'm going to share terminal first. All right, can everybody see this? Uh, is it big enough? You can shout out if it's not big enough. That's fine. Cool, thank you. All right, uh, so I'm already logged in as a normal user. So the Kubernetes, uh, sorry, the Magnum um, service is under the namespace COE. So OpenStack COE cluster list will show you the clusters that you have. So now I have one, one cluster here. All right, um, this is, uh, if you're familiar with command line, you can use um, OpenStack COE to do everything. Um, if you're not, um, I will jump back into the web now to show you how it looks from uh, the web dashboard. Mm, sorry, um, this one. Okay. So, uh, did I lose everyone? Stop share, sorry. Okay, sorry. Yep. So this is the dashboard. <clears throat> Under container infrastructure clusters, um, this is what you see. You can create a cluster here easily. Name of a cluster, let's call it test. And um, cluster template, I'm just gonna make this bigger for everyone. Uh, we have come up with some default cluster templates. Um, they generally correspond to availability zones. So if you have Coda in Melbourne, just spin out in Melbourne. If you have Coda in Tasmania, spin out in Tasmania. So I'm just going to select Melbourne for now. Um, size, you can choose um, how many masters you want and how many workers you want. And um, you don't have to do that. What you have to do is select keypad because this allows you to access the instances in case anything breaks. And just submit. And you can see that um, Magnum has gone and tried to create the cluster called test. Um, so the dashboard is kind of, I would say lacking at the moment to do anything else from here. To really do anything, you have to drop to the common line. From here now. Sorry, too many windows. All right. So this is back to where we are at the command line. Uh, we can see that one is creating in progress. So what now? Um, so from here, you will want to be able to control your Kubernetes cluster. Um, the, the, the command is cluster config with your cluster um, name. All right, um, this would create a file here 
called config, which is basically um, defines how to connect to your cluster. Like this is the server and the oh, hi, yeah the 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 URL of the API server, your Kubernetes API server. So you just have to export kubeconfig as to point it to the config file, and you can use kubectl from now on <coughs> to do everything. All right. So from now on, this instructions are all in Kubernetes land. We are we are done with OpenStack Magnum. Um, you can see. Um, that there are uh, lots of um, internal services that Magnum has spun up for Kubernetes. And then we, um, you can control it from here. So for example, if I want to run an Nginx server, I can do this. I have cheat code. Um, and this would just, run an Nginx container. Um, you can run a load balancer. I'll just apply this first and then I'll show everyone how this looks like. So this is the manifest for the um, load balancer where you can say, I want a load balancer and I want it to target the web server that I just spun up on port 80. Um, so I say, as I talked previously, like all the, um, all the, sorry, Kubernetes resources are actually OpenStack resources. So if you do a kubectl get all now, you can see that a load balancer is being created in Kubernetes land. If you look at OpenStack, You can see that the uh, OpenStack Octavia load balancer is being created in OpenStack land. All right, so this is under pending create. It generally takes a while before it um, is ready because it needs to spin up the M4 for us. So when it is ready, um, the external IP will change and it will show you the um, IP of the external IP. Oh, there we, there we go. Of the um, load balancer. So what it does is it spins up the m attaches a floating IP to it. So you can get to it from anywhere in the world. Um, so if you just visit this, you will probably see a default Nginx um, web, web page, if it all works correctly. All right, um, this is almost, everything. Uh, I would like to finish up by showing a, a dashboard because some people might be more comfortable with getting dashboard. So one of the better dashboards that I've seen so far that Kieran recommended me is this dashboard called Octan, O-C-T-N-T. -T. Um, if you just launch it, uh, it takes in the, uh, hold on. So this is the Octane dashboard. Um, so from here, you can see your applications. That's the web server I just launched. Ta -da. And um, many, many other stuff. Like if you have a uh, storage and it will just appear here. Um, you have your number of nodes and things like that. So if you are more comfortable working in dashboard, this is definitely something you should try out. It's really nice. Okay, yep, that's me. Um, let's go back to the slides. I'm sorry for the number of changes. Thanks, Jake. It's a bit tricky changing screens. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, this one. Yep. Present. Okay, demo done.
All right, so uh, from now on, work in progress. Uh, we are at Nectar, we are coming up with uh, Nectar Container Registry. This is primarily to support spinning up the Magnum cluster. As we know, the Docker Hub has now um, rate limited number of pools. So we, when we spin up Magnum cluster, the Magnum cluster it, um, pulls in a lot of containers from it needs a lot of containers for its, all the services. So Docker Hub rate limits actually um, might cause an issue. So we have come up with our uh, a container registry to counter this problem. Um, so we have it working right now to support our Magnum cluster. Um, things we want to go further and do with it is, uh, we are thinking about is to allow users to share their research containers on this container registry also. Um, I use it as a way to promote the fair containers. Um, we're also thinking that it could help us in reproducible research where we can have containers that once you put it in, we have a CI CD workflow that says, oh, okay, uh, here's a new container, um, launch it into Nectar Cloud and make sure it runs properly. And, has all these results, then we can be sure that this container, um, uh, the output is rep reproducible over time. Yep. Uh, these are the resources that we have uh, talked about. If you are brand new to Kubernetes, uh, the first resource is really helpful um, when I was starting out. Um, Nectar ourselves has come up with a tutorial. This is mainly to complement the first one where we talked about how uh, Magnum interacts with ne um, Nectar and Kubernetes resources. Um, the Octane Dashboard is also here. All right, next, um, Kieran uh, would like to talk a bit about our course. Yeah, thanks, Jake. Um, so I just wanted to give a quick shout out. Um, so our course is the name of our working group. Um, so basically we're build, building a Kubernetes community of practice. Um, and so far with input from the community, we've um, produced a paper just detailing shared challenges and opportunities in the research space. Um, so if you go to that URL, you can find that paper. Um, we're also looking at implementing some of the recommendations from that paper as well, um, which are things to do with creating like a, a reference kind of architecture and um, guides and you know what things work with um, building a Kubernetes cluster on Nectar and elsewhere and what things don't and kind of um, centralizing and sharing kind of this information rather than groups kind of discovering it individually and running into problems and fixing them. Um, our next working group meeting is on Friday. So you can, um, if you look at the Arcos ardc.edu.au site, um, you'll see some links to join the working group. Um, it'd be great to have your participation and your input um, as we kind of continue to, to drive um, sort of Kubernetes usage, usage and best practice um, with the community's help. So yeah, thanks. Um, okay. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, open for questions. Any questions for Kieran or Jake? I think there was one in the chat that was yep, we from Dimitri about adding nodes of a particular size or flavor. You, but you talked about that, I think. Yeah, um, we've talked, touched a bit about that. You can add in a node group of um, size one with a new flavor, and um, that will be a new node of a flavor. Um, there's a question about multiple AZs. We haven't tried that yet. I'm very interested in trying it out. And uh, this is something on, my, on the radar. Um. Okay. I'm just putting the, um, that the um, that paper that Kieran just mentioned is on Zenodo at that address. I've just dropped in the chat there for people who want to go straight to it. That's the one I think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, thanks Reese. Yeah, I forgot that we'd have a chat here, so. No need to yes. manually type out these URLs. No, that's right. It's in. It's on Zenodo. We, we have recorded today's session, this one that Jake's been recording this, so I'll need to get that off you, Jake. And we've recorded the first part, but not obviously the breakouts. And so that'll be available to people. Has anyone else got a, a last, a final uh, question 
or uh, anything that they'd like to raise for you know the, that we will that the team can go away and get back to you on. Obviously, we're going to run out of time in a minute, but. No. I, in that case, I just want to thank um, Paul, Ave, James, Luca, and Jake for their presentations, and thank uh, Andy, Sam, Kieran, Steve, and Joe in the background. Even though she wasn't on the Johnny on the spot, she was doing a lot of work in the background to sort of organise all this, and especially to all of you guys for for your comments and, and your feedback today and your participation. We, we are expecting that this would be a, a regular event. How often, we're not sure, but we will do more of these. We'll also do more tech talks and things, but we will have a user forum in the future and you'll hear about it uh, as time goes on. Um, the other thing just to say is we'll, we'll send you out in the next couple of days, it'll probably come from Joe, um, a little feedback form about, to, about this forum, just to collect some of your views about what worked and what didn't from the from the event perspective, because as I said, we'll, it'll shape partly what we do. And while the one final thing we didn't get to, where well, there were a couple of comments that people made about what they wanted in future sessions. But if you have any other thoughts about that, it'd still be really useful to drop those to Joe probably just to let her know. Um, we didn't have enough time to talk in detail about what would be useful from you guys. We've got a bit of sense of it, but if there's any particular topic or a particular person or a particular project you'd like to hear hear from, um, then we'd be really interested to get that feedback as well. I'll, um, I'll put a question in the feedback form. That's for great. That one. Yep. Thanks, Joe. And Paul, is there any other final things you'd like to say or, or comments you'd like to make? Or I'll just reiterate, yeah, we are looking to do this uh, in, in future. So have been some more of these maybe every few months. Um, the other thing is we're looking to have some more um, just very brief sort of technical catch up sort of regularly scheduled for people to just have sort of, you know, a, a Zoom room to drop into maybe once a month or something where you can uh, directly talk to the, the technical guys and the core services team and ask questions and things like that. So we'll be scheduling those fairly soon and, and letting people know uh, about those. Um, yeah, I mean, really, we just want to have more sort of you know, direct engagement with the with the users and try and you know try and help improve the service as much as we can to uh, to meet your needs. Right, thanks, Paul. Uh, and just as a last thing, I've just put into the chat two links for those who are interested. Today, they announced we announced the AADC's uh, rounds of platforms and um, data partnerships projects. Um, if anyone wants to look at those, perhaps the platforms projects will be just to people to look at what we've actually just funded in the current round, which is sort of, I think all up around $7 million, $8 million worth of funding. Um, just if you want to, I was mentioned at the beginning, Carmel, I think mentioned it. Um, thanks again, guys. We'll close off now and um, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Reese. No worries. Bye guys. Thank you.